Hey, let's bring John Sandweg in on this. John is the former acting director at ICE. He was there during the Obama administration, former acting general counsel at the Department of Homeland Security. So on these points, you've heard from, you know, a number of prominent re Republicans, certainly in Georgia, the governor is going to be on our show tomorrow, uh, said, you know, today that the uh, Biden administration immigration policies are, are to blame for a lot of this. What would you say about that, this terrible events, this terrible event in Georgia? Well, first of all, let me just say it, it is a terrible, terrible event. And when I was the acting director at ICE and when I was at DHS before even going to ICE, your biggest nightmare is something like this. Someone who was previously on the radar screen, uh, was not taken into custody, uh, and then something horrific like this, this murder happens. Uh, absolutely the kind of thing that keeps you up at night worrying about it um, and the kind of thing that makes you do some serious reflection when this happens about what, what occurred. I will say this quickly, though. The first thing is there are two touch points with Mr. Ibarra, it appears. One is at the border in 2022, and then later this NYPD incident. It is very hard to blame the administration for not taking him into custody at the border in 2022. I know there's been a lot of discussion about this issue of the use of paroles at the border. The bottom line is ICE is not funded anywhere near to the capacity to detain every single person who's coming across the border. So just as it relates to this one issue, should ICE have detained him in 2022? You know, remember, ICE is funded for about 40,000 detention beds per day annually. We are getting hundreds of thousands in a month. Right. There is no possible way they can do this. What they can do is what they're doing. They try to make risk assessments, decide is this person a threat or is that person a threat? I don't know all the facts. I think there's a lot of facts that need to come out about this case, but I don't think there was any indication in 2022 that Ibarra posed a threat. And with the resource constraints they're under, I don't think they had a choice but to release him. Any indication that if um, some of these measures that are being pushed for in, in the various bills that we talk about all the time were in place, that they would have had, you know, more at their disposal in the, in that area, you know, to do more at the border itself. Yes, yeah, certainly the congressional bill, because it carried a ton of money for ICE and a ton of money for detention operations, would have increased the chances. Candidly, Connell, probably still, if he's just somebody for whom there's no what we would call derogatory information, right. someone who's no indicia is a threat, probably not going to be detained at that time. Look, the bigger question here, though, is what happened in New York, right? What happened in New York where he's charged with endangering a child? Did ICE miss it? Was ICE slow on lodging the detainer? And then, you know, look, let's be, let's face it. I mean, New York City is a sanctuary city, yes. which means explicitly they won't necessarily honor ICE detainers. But I think a lot of questions, valid questions, need to be raised about what happened in New York well, what and how did ICE there? The NYPT should have alerted ICE, or the, because of the sanctuary city, they just would never do that. So, what do you think happened there? <sighs> You know, I'm not entirely sure. It's not. It's look. It sounds to me like this was a vehicular-related offense. Right. So he's driving. I heard Ali, your reporter, mentioned a moment ago. He's driving someone, a, a child, on a moped. It's possible he was cited and released by NYPD. Uh, it's possible that he was brought into a station and just released very quickly. A lot of that facts will depend on you know looking at who's at fault here, right? Uh, but I will say this, Cotto. Look, the situation ICE is in. They're overwhelmed. Right. Yep. Just what a week and a half ago, there were stories reporting that they're looking at drug, cutting detention down, tw releasing t thousands of migrants because they don't have any more money. So the question would be when they look at, you know, like I said, this is what you have to do when you're in ICE. You decide you do risk assessments. Is this person sufficiently pose a threat balanced with everybody else who's a detention priority, including people finishing extensive prison sentences, including people arrested sure. on violent. So I, I don't know all the facts here, but I will say this. It's. This is what you don't want to see when you're at ICE, and the first of thing course. you ask. Of course. Directors, yep. did, we did we ever see this guy before? And if I found out he was arrested by NYPD, I'd be very curious to know, how did we miss him? All right, so that's one of the things we have to get um, get answers on. You know, final thing, John, on the political side of all this, we're talking about what bills that were, you know, being debated, if they were in place, would it have made a difference? I had Congressman Carter, Buddy Carter from Georgia on uh, last hour. So I was talking to him first about the Senate bills that the Republicans uh, uh, killed, but he was saying on the House side they they, they had their own uh, version, H.R. 2, that he thought would have made a difference. Here's what he said. We passed in the House H.R. 2, which is the most comprehensive border bill that there is out there. And if we could get the Senate to take that up, then we could end much of this. But right. let me be clear. The president can end this. He can end this himself. Okay, so that's two parts, John. Number one, would that have made a difference? And that second part that he brings up ahead of the president's trip, by the way, to the border coming on Thursday, what can he do himself? Very quickly, Connor, look, mandates to ICE to detain more people, mandates to the administration to detain more people without the funding are pointless.
right? The, the funding, I can't begin to explain to you how short we are of the funding. As it relates to whether or not if the president took some broader administrative action, you know, uh, or if something like the Senate bill was implemented, it could have kept someone like this from coming to the board in the first place. Look, it's more speculative. Right. I will just say this. The Senate bill certainly contained tens of billions of dollars for detention. It would have increased the likelihood that someone like this would have been detained. But even that probably would have been insufficient, you know, because of the sheer volume of individuals we see at the border and the sheer limitations on uh, ICE resources nationwide. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.